Greetings, beloved. Thank you for tuning in today. It is the dream of many people to purchase homes. While many people choose to purchase a home that is already built, others may choose to build from the ground up. Either way, the builder is required to use a blueprint. A blueprint is defined as a design or a plan put on paper for the purpose of constructing a building successfully. The same way construction workers follow the blueprint in order to successfully build a house, likewise, Christians who want to build a solid family must be willing to follow God's blueprint to do so. Stay tuned as we discuss the design that God has given us to follow, God's blueprint for family. You're going to have to have some conversations. You know, you, every conversation you have isn't going to be how much you love one another. That's right. <laughs> you see? It's going to, you know, now, before you get married, you know, of course, you're still on cloud nine and you can't get over how much they just doing for you and how much they love you and how they showing you how much they love you. But, you know, at some point you have to start talking about life. OK, I have children. How do you feel about it? You know, you have to even lay down rules as far as nine. And that's one, one thing that we did. What justifies a spanking and what doesn't? Now, our children will tell you lying. You're going to get it every single time. Disrespect, talking back, you're going to get it every single time. Sometimes you'll write lines. Sometimes you'll, you know, we just have our way. And what we had to do was learn to accept one another because in the ways that we have. Because even after we were married, you know, because both of us had children before we, before we got married. And even after we were married, we had to have these discussions. And basically, we had to learn one another. And, and not only that, we had to learn one another's differences and how God created us. I couldn't get upset at her because maybe she didn't spank the way I thought she should. Or she couldn't get upset with me because maybe she thought I was too hard. And, and a, another thing that you have to remember is to never, ever have these talks like that in front of your children. If, if I thought, if my wife thought that maybe I was too hard on the child, one of our children, she didn't tell me right there in front of them. That's, that's for when we're off to ourselves to talk about. Well, you know, I think you could have handled it that way. And see, what we've done, you know, to even get around that is before we discipline our children, we talk about what that discipline should be. You see, we talk about it together. And, you know, that we just feel like that that's one of the ways that we can stop the enemy from coming in and, and causing a breach there. Because you think about it. If you have a child before you get married, you know, to the person that maybe the Lord has for you, that child is a part of you. And you don't want that child to be mistreated. Or, and you don't want to feel like they're being mistreated. Mm -hmm. Because, and think about it, no matter how much your husband or your spouse who have come into you in your child's life, uh, you know, no matter how much they say they love you, if you feel like in your heart they're mistreating your child, then it's hard for you to think that they really love you because you know that that child is an extension of you. Right. You see that? <clears throat> and I think most people, most of us have enough sense not to marry someone that doesn't love our child the same way they would love their own children, mm -hmm. you see. Amen. <laughs> I had a thought, but it left me. <laughs> I was trying to wait for you to finish talking. <laughs> It'll yeah. come back to me. Yeah. <laughs> and so that, those are the things that we, we have to deal with. And so, I mean, and that's just the surface of it. Right. Never mind that child having to get used to the idea of another father figure being around or another mother figure being around. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's easy for them to get offended. And a lot of times the first thought in their mind is this person is trying to replace my mama or this person is trying to replace my daddy. And you have to have, that's why it's important that you have that talk with them so they'll understand, no, this person isn't trying to replace your, parent, your, your biological father or your biological mother. Mm -hmm. It's just that me and your, your biological father or daddy are not together anymore. So it's not that they're trying to replace them, it's just I've accepted them having a place in my life and you can accept them too you see that and so it's important that while you're getting to know that person that you're dating that your children's first time seeing them isn't on the day that y'all get married 
it's important that you may, you know, if you're going to be a family, you need to start working towards that when you figure out this is the person that God has for me. This is the one that I'm going to marry. Don't spring all that on them when y'all walking down the aisle together. You see, they need to get used to the idea of having someone. And for a lot of little children, it's, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, it, it's, in, it's, it takes an adjustment for mm -hmm. that. Yeah, um, what I was going to mention was you, you used the term acceptance and knowing what acceptance means. And I think it's important that we understand that for that step parent to accept a child does not mean that they're going to um, give them their way all the time, let them get away with everything, or just agree with every single thing that you may be doing as the biological parent. That's, that's not how we define acceptance, but it is simply loving them, you know, and uh, of course, we have a definition of what love is, but and, and that is loving them the same way that they're loving and accepting you. Meaning, you know, whatever comes with being a parent to that child, you know, that's what that acceptance is. It, it means there are no conditions there, you know. And so we have to understand what that means because sometimes, um, like you said, when when you've been a single parent, be it mother or father, and another person comes in. It can be kind of difficult even for that parent to um, adjust, and a difficult adjustment can cause you to see things um, from a distorted view, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, I know for me personally, um, our situation, because of course we have a blended family, it was different for me in, in a number of ways because number one, I never dealt with divorced parents because I only had one parent growing up. Never had a father there, never knew a father. and so. For me, I could have taken this attitude that, oh, they just need to get over it. But I couldn't take that attitude. I had to ask the Lord to show me how to still be able to minister to our children from a standpoint that I didn't even fully understand. But I couldn't throw away what they were feeling or the adjustments that had to be made and things like that. Um, that was a part of accepting them in this whole situation was okay, well, I understand that in, I'm, they're going through something that I don't fully understand, but it doesn't give me the right to pull away and just not be a part of it. A part of accepting them is accepting everything that comes with it, and that is the adjustments that have to be made, the feelings that come with it, and all of that. Um, and so that's just something else that we have to keep in mind, that, you know, part of that acceptance is just, I guess, just accepting the whole picture and not, you know, trying to have bits and pieces that feel good to us. Yeah. And, and one of the things that the Lord brought to my mind as you were talking was when you're talking about a blended family, um, of course, you're talking about two families coming together to make one family. And so it's, it's important that uh, before that takes place, that, um, that the two separate families, before they actually come together in, in, in marriage and things like that, that each side is fully healed from what they've gone through. Um, if, if, let's say for instance, if my wife and I, when we got married, if, if I was having problems with my biological children or she was having problems with her biological children, well, those don't go, those problems don't go away after just because she and I have gotten married. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if I have a, a son that I'm not getting along with for whatever reason, or he and I just, you know, uh, just having our issues, well, you know, and, and if I'm on, if I'm off the Christmas list, so to speak, well, <laughs> me marrying somebody else or me marrying someone isn't going to make that situation better. So if my child is against me and I'm the biological parent, mm -hmm. then when I get married and they perceive that my wife and I are on the same team and that we're inseparable, then that makes two of us that's off that Christmas list, if, and if that makes sense. It, and so, I mean, not, that's if parents are standing together the way that they're supposed to stand together. You know, in other words, if I'm having this problem with one of my biological children and I'm not going to back down from it, well, if I get married to somebody, they're going to have a problem with it as well. So that's going to just, all you're doing is add more right. to the pot. And so that's why it's important, I think, to be resolving those things so that mm -hmm. somebody else, that, that, person that you're marrying isn't getting caught in the crossfire, isn't becoming the enemy before they even have a chance to express who right. they truly are to that child. Yes. 
and I will just reiterate this as we're speaking that, you know, a lot of things when we're talking about um, the family, we speak from our own experiences and things because that's something that we both, you know, had to deal with. And I can tell you that it would be a much easier transition if, you know, those things are resolved before because, like you said, it, it kind of creates an automatic strain there mm -hmm. where it really doesn't have to be if you start dealing with those things that may be going on, um, you know, before that, that new spouse comes into the picture. That's right. Now, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, when God was given the law, one of his laws was this, that whenever a couple got married, God commanded that they go on what we call today a honeymoon for a whole year. For a whole year, the man couldn't work. He had to make sure he had enough money saved up to take care of his family, uh, his, his new bride. For a whole year, if he was in the military, you know, he had to be excused from his military service. And the purpose of that, basically, according to the word of God, was to love on his wife and to, to win her, you know. In other words, to, to make sure that when they come out of that honeymoon that they were solid. Mm -hmm. Now today we go on a honeymoon for what, a week, two weeks, you know, and we think, you know, and now you think about it, now this was a couple that didn't have any kids together most of the time. I mean, didn't have any kids, you know, coming into it or anything like that. They just had one another to focus on for that whole year. And the purpose of that was to prepare them for the rest of their marriage. It was to, so that they could get to know one another better, because you think about it, back then, a lot of marriages were arranged. And so, you know, of course, and, and if we'll be honest, a lot of times, uh, even today when we get married, we don't know everything that there is to know about our spouse. That's right. Especially if you're not living with them beforehand, you know, you, you don't find out a whole lot until you get until you start living together, no matter how much you're in love with one another. You find out different things about that spouse. Some things aggravate you. Some things, you know, you just begin to see all of those little differences like that. And so the purpose of that was to reinforce that marriage, that whole year of honeymooning. And so you think about today and what we're doing with our, you know, fast food restaurant type of thing we got going on. <laughs> you know, we, we do everything. We don't. You know, I, I think we've heard this statement before, how long people prepare for a wedding, but they're not That's really right. preparing for marriage. That's right. we, we'll plan it out to the T, you know, and, and, but marriage isn't planned out. Or we're not discussing issues that we're supposed to discuss. And so you, you factor in the idea of bringing in families together, children together, you know, especially if you have two sets of children how not only do they have to get used to seeing somebody else as a father figure or a mother figure, but they have to get used to sharing their time. They have to get used to seeing mama spend time with a stepchild doing homework. Uh, everybody understand? They have to get used to sharing mama's time or sharing daddy's time, period. I don't get you the way that I used to. You know, I don't get to spend as much time. And they just have to understand that this is just kind of how life goes. My marrying someone doesn't mean that I love you any less, you see. And then you think about, uh, you know, you think about how many children and how many marriages today are in trouble because of children. Because, because uh, I'm going to tell you, a lot of times what happens in, in, in marriages and in relationships, um, mom and dad is not getting along or they've had an argument. And so instead of me pouring my affection on my wife and trying to reconcile, I just go spend time with the kids. What happens is a lot of times children become an out, if that right. make any sense. They become the, the you know, <laughs> the other person, so to speak. Right. I, I, you know, me and you aren't getting along, so I just go pull my love on my children and, and vice versa. And so we have to be careful in those things. That right. We don't allow that to take place in our marriage. And, mm -hmm. and with that, we have to make our children understand when we remarry or we get married to someone who's not their biological parent, that it, it is not that I'm putting you on hold or that I'm not loving you and, and being affectionate towards you. And, and, you know, and also we as parents also have to make, uh, make sure that we're not, um, you know, uh, leaving our obligation to our children. In mm -hmm. other words, that we're not just focused on the marriage and, and, and these things. Because one thing children don't need to feel like, they don't need to feel like they're burdens. 
or that they are the fifth wheel, that, you know, they're just a spare tire, that, you know, okay, I've seen you go in and out of relationships, and the only time you want to spend time with me is when your relationship is going bad. You'll cause them to despise, you know, that, that person, you right. see. And so it's important that, you know, my wife and I, we have family time with our children. We sit down and we talk about things with them. And so it's important that they're included on different things, you know, that they are not just pushed out to the side. It's two households in there, your marriage and then the relationship with your children. That right. is one blended family, you see. And I can tell you that, you know, in theory, we say, oh, yeah, that shouldn't be, that it's two different households. But in practice, a lot of times people are not prepared for the blended family. They're not following the word of God because it doesn't matter whether it's the original biological family or the blended family, the word of God doesn't change. And it gives an order of how, you know, things are to be in the marriage and we have to follow that. And oftentimes um, when people are not following the word and um, they're not preparing for the adjustments that have to be made with family, with dealing with children, with dealing with you know, emergencies, dealing with, you know, medical issues, dealing with, you know, whatever might come about, um, then that, that's exactly what happens. You end up with two different families in the household. And, I mean, it may as well be a war zone because there's not going to be a coming together. It's not going to be any peace. It's not going to be a good environment to be in, you know, if you have, an, if you have those, that separation there. And so it is so, so important. Um, regardless to how the children may or may not be adjusting, it's important for the parents to stand strong and be firm in getting the point across that we are one family, which is one of the reasons anybody who know me, we told it to our family very early on, um, I don't refer to any of our children as stepchildren. Somebody will just have to know that they're not my biological children. Nobody knows because I, I don't care to use that term. You know, um, because I want them to understand and know that I see them as my own biological children and that's the way I treat them. That's the way I love them. Um, and, and we're one big family. It's not just two different families, of course, the word being blended. That means everything is all mixed in there together. We're just all one big family. And so um, it's important that the parents get that message across inside the house and on the outside of the house, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And, and so, I mean, some of the things that we're discussing, you know, of course, these are things that can just blow up in the faces of parents and in families, you know, uh, if we're not careful. I mean, and you think about it this way, you know, if you're single and, and you don't have any children and the other person that you're going to marry is single with no children, at some point, that's the way it was, you know, with all of us. Mm -hmm. And... Think about the problems that you'd have outside of children and outside of trying to blend two, two, you know, two families together. Uh, you know, it, with just you and your spouse, if, it was, if it was just you two living in, on your own planet, you still have some kind of issue that you have to work out. Right. And then so you can multiply that times a thousand when you're talking about adding children in there, you know, when you're talking about blending two, two families together to make one that the, you, you have to be able to look down that road and see what can take place. You see, you don't just assume, well, because I love this person, then my child will accept them as well. Right. You see, you don't just assume that. Now, another thing that the Lord have laid on my heart to say is, is that it's important, you see, that whenever you're blending two families together, that you don't, talk about, and just in general, I think this is just a good general rule, that you don't talk about that biological parent that you're no longer with, that, that, that uh, you know, their biological parent that, that you're no longer with to them in a bad manner, in a bad way, mm -hmm. you see. Because what can take place, and I think this eggs on the idea of when children take on that idea that they feel like that, that new parent is trying to take their biological parent's place. Is because maybe, you know, if, if they've heard you speaking bad about that biological parent. Now, you have to keep in mind with children, they don't care how big of a devil daddy is or how big of a devil mama is. They're going to still love that parent no matter how, you know, no matter how you feel about them. They're still going to love them. And just because maybe uh, they were the devil to you, it don't mean that they're the devil to them. 
You see, children love their parents. Don't, it doesn't matter how, how you know, bad of a, of a spouse they were to you. That's right. In their mind, that's still daddy or that's still mama, you know. And, and so if they grow up hearing you talk bad about their parent, then you make it bad, you make it hard f to bring in another person, you see, because in their mind, it, it could be conceived as, well, you know, daddy wasn't good enough for you or mama wasn't good enough for you. And so this other person that you're trying to bring in isn't going to be good enough for you. And so, and, 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 you know, we've preached a message on that before. And, and so we have to bring this out, especially when it, talk, you know, it, it's just something about the relationship between mother and son and father and daughter. Now, that's where your real issues are going to come in at. Does everybody understand that? The daughter, most of the time, isn't going to have a problem with the stepdaddy. She's going to have a problem with the stepmama. And the son isn't going to have a problem a lot of times with the step uh, stepdaddy or the stepmom. She's going to have a problem with the stepdaddy. Why? Because there's like this, this bond between mother and son and daughters and fathers. Does everybody understand that? And so it's important, you know, <laughs> that these things are ironed out yes. beforehand. I can remember when my father, my biological father died, it was maybe two or three years later that my mother started uh, dating and she was dating this guy. And he came over to the house one time. And I, I can remember being as sleepy as I don't know what, but in my mind, I'm the pit bull. I'm going to guard my mama. Ain't nobody going to, you know, I'm going to see what you're about. So. I, I, you know, they'd sit on the couch together. I'd be sitting right there in between them. What you over here for? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying my best to stay awake. <laughs> but that's, that's the way sons are about their mothers. Especially when they, you know, they, they are protective of their mothers. And they feel like they have to watch out for them. And daughters can be that way about their fathers as well. You know. Daughters can be that way. And so it's important that, you know, when you're talking about blending a family, that you are aware of all of these different areas uh, that you're having to deal with concerning that blended family. That you don't allow the enemy. You, you're able to look down that road and you're able to see how the enemy could play things, you know, people against one another and, and things like that. Because he's going to definitely try. Um, it, it has come to my mind several times, and I don't know that we'll get to actually say anything about it today, but, you know, there's another factor that may have to be dealt with, um, you know, concerning children um, outside of the marriage who may never actually live in the house um, with the two biological parents of, you know, of, of a family. Um, sometimes it could be caused by infidelity, or sometimes it could just be... Um, as a result of that child being born before, you know, you got married or something like that. But um, in any case, you know, that adds a, a whole nother dimension of things that you may have to deal with when you're dealing with um, a child that came about for whatever reason, but they're not living in the house with you and, and having to deal with, you know, another parent there. Um, and hopefully we'll, you know, kind of maybe get to talk a little bit more about that at, at some point in this series. Um, but one thing is true and that we should always remember and that is you know children don't ask to come here and they're not in control of what family they're born into um they don't have any control over how their parents are and so when we're dealing with children in these situations um i think it's important for us to be able to separate um that child from that situation and and understand that they don't have any control over what the adults are doing you know, even though they may respond emotionally to certain things um, because they're part of the situation, but they don't have any control over it. And I think it's important that we be that we're able to separate those things, you know, the children from those situations and deal with the situations and deal with it like adults and then, you know, deal with the children in the way that we should deal with children. Yeah. Now, let me make this. Does everybody understand what she was talking about, that you have a couple that's married? are together and then there's a child that's born outside of that marriage in some kind of way and talking about how to deal with that other child that's born 
outside of that marriage for whatever reason, you know, whether it's, inf well, infidelity is the reason, you know, if you're together. But just dealing with that, and if, if we're not careful as, as parents, you know, and, and as adults, we will take and lash out at a child that had nothing to do with being here. We'll take that out on them, and every time we see them, we, and, and you know, if we're not careful, we can do that with our own, you know, stepchildren that were mm -hmm. brought into the marriage, you know, that's as, true. well, that's not my child, and so I'm not going to love them the same way, you know, or me and mom are not getting along, and so, you know, all your biological children, they, they're off the Christmas list as well, you know, it's, it's just all of y'all, y'all just alike, you know, <laughs> and so, you know, but we have to be careful that we're, we're not taking it out on the children, in other words. Even if they were conceived outside of marriage due to infidelity, we have to be careful that, you know, that, that's still a child there. And they're not responsible for getting here, you know. They're not responsible for being born into that situation. And we have to make sure that if we are uh, angry or, you know, of course, you, you're going to be hurt and upset about it, that you talk that over with the, the people that's responsible for it, not for, not take it out on the child. Well, I'm a, because I've seen that, you know, I'm a love, continue to love you, but I, that child, you know, I just don't want to have anything to do with it or I'm not going to love it or whatever the case is. Because in reality, if you can be that way, it shows that you haven't forgiven that person, you see, for whatever it is that they've done, the one that have uh, did you wrong. It, it's the same concept as, if there's infidelity and I'm, I'm getting mad at the, the, the man that my wife is cheating with. Well, I'm not married to the man, I'm married to her, you see. And so, no, you're the one that I have the issue with, not the other person. I'm not going to go fight somebody over what you're out there doing, you see. No, my issue is with you. Mm -hmm. And so how many <laughs> of us have known situations like that? Well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm mad at you, really. But I'm going to fight the world and just let you skate on by with it, right. you see. No, and so you have to be that same way when you're talking about a child that's born as a result of infidelity. You have to, you know, and, and then, then you have to deal with when, when you're married to a spouse that may have done that and brought another child in this world outside of your marriage. You also have to deal with this, that you have to think about that child as a part of your spouse. That, that child is, the, just because you don't like the child or like the situation, it, it, it doesn't negate the idea of that other spouse, that one that's responsible for bringing him here or her here, it, that they still love that child. Right. You see, they still love her or him or whatever, you know, and so you, you have to take into consideration their feelings before you start shutting out them having a relationship with the child. Mm -hmm.